The federal government has also uh, ramped up the pressure on the, the Andrews government to, to do something. We saw uh, an intervention from uh, Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, uh, Greg Hunt, who is a federal cabinet minister um, uh, from Victoria, uh, Jason Wood, who is a uh, federal uh, Victorian uh, liberal backbencher. He actually wants uh, the federal police to um, you know, get, get involved in tackling African youth crime uh, by having the, the gang squad, you know, assist uh, uh, Victoria Police. Probably the most high-profile intervention, though, was Home Affairs Minister uh, Peter Dutton, where he and uh, he appeared on 2GB, and of course Peter Dutton's uh, not uh, known for uh, not being around the bush, you know, said, you know, we've got to call it from it is, you know, African, uh, you know, youth uh, gang gang violence, and said, you know, people of Victoria, uh, you know, they're they're scared in their homes, scared to scared to go out to uh, restaurants and slam, you know, politically correct p approach to policing, and uh, as he called them, joke sentences from the a judiciary which is being uh, stacked by uh, civil libertarians. Now, this was, you know, d despite all the crimes we're seeing, this was actually mocked. Uh, uh, there were, you know, these lefties on Twitter who, you know, po uh, po uh, posted, you know, p uh, pictures of themselves, you know, eating out uh, uh, at restaurants in Melbourne saying, see, it's completely safe. And, uh, uh, the acting uh, pr uh, Premier Tim Pallas said, like, oh, you know, uh, Peter Dutton's comments were irresponsible. And uh, Anthony Albanese, who's not even from uh, Victoria, uh, also said, claimed that, oh, because I, you know, went to a restaurant in Melbourne, uh, there, there is no, um, you know, crime problem. Like, they're, they're still, uh, these lefties, they're still living in their alternative universe where, you know, they're because, you know, nothing bad has happened to them, that everything must be fine. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, it does. Um, it really does reek of hypocrisy on their part. But I think, in regards to the uh, the response of the federal government, I think it's something that, that we really need to acknowledge here: the fact that um, ultimately the responsibility does lie with the federal government. They're obviously the ones who are uh, in charge of immigration policy in Australia, rather than the state governments. Now, for all the rhetoric that we've heard from the Liberal Party about stopping the boats and um, you know all, all this sort of rhetoric about illegal immigration, I think we've overlooked. Um, the real elephant in the room, which is legal immigration. Um, we can go on as much as we want about stopping the boats and whatever else, but this is a government which is perfectly happy to allow two to 300,000 people to enter Australia each year. I mean, this is a country where you've got the majority of the population living in four major cities. Um, despite being a massive, uh, you know, massive land mass, we really don't have the, uh, I suppose we're not developed enough to be having this, level of mass immigration entering our country, and particularly when it's from, uh, as I said, third world war-torn countries like this, which have radically different cultures to our own. I think the really, uh, I suppose the, the buck really has to stop at the, um, the actions of the federal government. So I think this is just a, an example of the Liberal Party trying to play politics. If they really cared about this, then they would significantly alter their immigration policy. Um, but we've seen with obviously Malcolm Turnbull, Tony Abbott, and even prior to that, John Howard, these were politicians who were perfectly happy to open the floodgates, um, and they did so in the name of um, so-called, you know, economic development. Um, but they they more or less threw the uh, the baby out with the bathwater, I think. Um, so yeah, it's you know as much as there is hypocrisy on the part of the left, I think that we've also got to look at the um, the so-called conservative politicians in our uh, who have served in our country. And um, as I said before, I think that the ultimate responsibility really does have to lie with them. Uh, probably the most disturbing uh, denial came from uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Lex uh, Lazary, who he, uh, even though he's a, a sitting Victorian judge, has a, a Twitter account, and he posted a photo of himself out to dinner. Now, it's interesting that, uh, you know, three uh, Victorian uh, federal MPs were, were dragged before the Victorian courts for contempt for criticising uh, a judge, yet uh, here we have, you know, a judge seeming to uh, criticise a, a politician and get involved in a political issue, and, you know, that doesn't exactly fill you with confidence that the judiciary is taking this issue seriously. No, exactly, you're right. I mean, we are meant to have separation of church and, oh, sorry, uh, separation of powers in Australia, and obviously the actions of this particular magistrate, um, you know, very much violate that concept. So it is a worry. Um, obviously, this particular 
magistrate does have uh, political leanings, which he isn't afraid of um, publicly expressing. So I think that um, in order to restore legitimacy in the not just the Australian courts, but I suppose the legal system more broadly, I think it is important to have uh, magistrates serving on the bench who um, who aren't going to go out and um, I suppose endorse a partisan uh, political position, as we have seen from this particular judge in this case. Oh, that's it. We don't get I've called before the court for contempt for you know daring to be critical of him. Oh, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Now, the uh, uh, African community leaders' response, assisted by the, you know, mainstream media, they've, you know, said, oh, the, you know, problems are, you know, are crime, uh, poverty and, uh, you know, racism itself. They've, they, uh, they've tried to, you know, play the victim themselves, saying that, you know, this is, you know, uh, uh, tiring, you know, all, you know, African Australians with, uh, with, with the same brush, and like many of them are, you know, are successful, uh, you know, lawyers and and business people. But of course, you know, we, and this is the the, the whole thing. They 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 claim that we're talking about, you know, all you know, Africans, like, of course, there's, um, you know, there, there's plenty who've, you know, uh, t- taken their, their, their second chance at, at life, you know, to, to their full, fullest extent. And, you know, uh, and another thing I noticed in one of the Guardian uh, columns is that, oh, you know, e- e- every group of like three Africans is now viewed as a gang, which is, which is just absurd. I mean, you know, we're not fearful of, you know, like, you know, a group of Africans we see on the street, we're afraid of the ones who go out and, and attack people. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, I think it is quite intellectually dishonest for certain people to push this agenda and say, oh, well, you know, look at this uh, this bit of anecdotal evidence about this, you know, this Sudanese immigrant who came here and became a lawyer. Like, yeah, obviously, you know, it would be absurd to suggest that every single Sudanese immigrant is a criminal. Um, but at the same time, I think we've also got to be realistic about this. Um, as I mentioned before um, earlier, there are statistics which, you know, quite clearly prove that this is a problem which exists specifically in the Sudanese community. You even had a, uh, I, I forget his name, but there was a um, a Sudanese soccer player who I think he plays for one of the Melbourne teams who came out and openly um, admitted this, that yes, this is a problem within the Sudanese community. Um, so I think for these people to to push this uh, this narrative or this particular argument that um, you know that it's some sort of a, uh, a racist agenda that's being pushed, I don't think that that's really um, it, it doesn't really uh, stand up. I don't think intellectually. Uh, as I said, it, it's not necessarily an argument uh, an argument against every single Sudanese immigrant, but at the same time, there is clearly a systemic problem which exists in that community, and I think if we cannot. Uh, pinpoint where exactly this problem originates from, then we're never going to be able to solve it. So in order to, you know, address this problem in the right way, I think you've got to call it for what it is. And yes, as I said, it is very much a problem within the uh, Sudanese community. And I've heard of a zero backlash against, uh, you know, African Australians in terms of, you know, being racially abused uh, on the street or, you know, vigilante, you know, Australians, you know, beating up, uh, you know, people of African appearance, you know, uh, you know, ordinary Australians, you know, they don't do things like that. You know, they, they, they want to see the issue addressed through, you know, our you know, political system, which is how, you know, the uh, Australian system of government works. Yes, you're right. Um, I think, yeah, you know, the average Australian doesn't usually, you know, they're not going to be the sort of people who are going to take things into their own hands. Generally speaking, you know, we are lucky enough to live in a country where we haven't had a whole lot of uh, political unrest throughout our nation's history. So I think most people usually assume that when a problem of this nature emerges that the political system will deal with it. Having said that, I think we are living in a very, shall we say, very unique, in which the uh, the political system isn't what it once was. I don't think that we have the same calibre of politician, we don't have the same calibre of leadership as we once did. We've gone from living in a country where you had, um, who was it, the uh, the Labour Prime Minister, who was a former train driver, um, uh, I, I forget his name, but he was a, an Australian Prime Minister, I believe, in maybe the 1950s or 60s or somewhere thereabouts, he used to have, uh, you know, people who would who would get involved in politics for the right reasons. It wasn't a career path for them. They got involved because they genuinely cared, because they genuinely believed in 
making this country a better place. They genuinely love Australia and they love the people who live there. Uh, I don't think that's the case anymore. I don't think we can, we can't be, um, we, we don't have the luxury anymore, I suppose, of looking towards our politicians for that sort of leadership because they're just not going to provide it. All they care about is winning elections and reading about themselves in the paper. So as I said, I think at one point in, uh, in Australian history, it wasn't adequate, uh, I suppose, mentality or attitude to have, but unfortunately it's just not the case anymore. And until we start uh, electing politicians who are, who are in it for the right reasons, I think unfortunately we're just going to continue even further down that particular path. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.